Hello Internet and welcome to another video. Alright, so in most of the videos and tutorials and explanations of genetic algorithms, it goes something like this. So you have a population of individuals. Each individual has its own DNA and fitness score. You take the most fit individuals and reproduce them. Parent 1 DNA, parent 2 DNA, single point crossover, maybe a bit of mutation sprinkled in there. Bada bing, bada boom, new individual. Do this a bunch until the population is replenished. Rinse and repeat. A little while ago, I was explaining this approach to genetic algorithms uh, to someone who's studied biology, and the response was basically, uh... That's not even remotely close to what happens. <laughs> so I reevaluated and decided to experiment with a different model of handling the genetics portion of the genetic algorithm. See, most of the time, the genetic encoding is exactly the same as whatever values are being used to determine the fitness. Like in the knapsack problem, for example, the individual's DNA is literally just which items are being used. But this doesn't allow for the complexity of gene expression and for things like recessive and dominant genes. So I threw together a little simulation in order to test this idea out, and uh, here's how it works. This is basically snake, but without a fixed grid. Snake eats food, means snake grows, and snake runs into all or itself means snake dies. I also added hunger, so that if a snake doesn't end up eating anything after a while, it just dies as well. The snakes have a number of eye sensors which can sense food, wall, and snake, and these inputs, along with its hunger level, are used as the inputs for its brain, which is a neural network, which has two outputs which determines if the snake is proverbially pressing left or right. The weights for the neural network are what's encoded as its DNA, and since the weights, at least in my model, are between minus 1 and 1, we can take advantage of how floating point numbers are structured to encode this. If we keep the sign in the exponent fixed as 0 and 128 respectively, we can just mess with the values of the mantissa, and the resulting float value will be between 2 and 4. Subtract 3, and we have our minus 1 to 1 range that we want. So one gene, or one float value gene thing, is actually made up of 23 values, each of which is used, along with that fixed section, to create a value of one float, which is the weight for one of the connections in the neural net. Now the slightly more complicated part is that the values we store as a gene aren't just 0 or 1, but are one of any number of genetic bases we want, in this case recessive 0, recessive 1, dominant 0, and dominant 1. Instead of snakes only having one set of genes like they would in the normal genetic algorithm implementation, which would make them kind of haploid, they have two, one for each parent, making them kind of diploid, and the combination of the bases for one gene from each of the parents determines how it will be actually expressed. When creating a snake offspring, the process of a crossovering mutation happens first between the two sets of DNA in parent 1 and between the two sets of DNA in parent 2, and then those two sets of DNA are then the full new genome for the offspring. With this system, it's possible for a snake to express a particular gene, or part of a gene, I know the terminology isn't very precise here, that neither of its parents expressed, which is something the traditional haploid kind of method doesn't simulate. So how does this diploid method stack up against the haploid method? Well, it performs about the same in this case, actually. Which is a little disappointing, I guess, but also not super surprising since the criteria for survival is pretty contrived and simple. I'm not so much interested in it as a more viable method for solving optimization problems like the knapsack problem or the traveling salesperson problem or something like that, but how it might be useful in some sort of evolution simulation. So there you go, for better or for worse, a slightly less not at all how it works version of a genetic algorithm. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.